In this video, we are going to see how we can configure purchase event on Facebook Pixel using Google Tag Manager for your Shopify store. This video is to help you so that you can track the conversions and your attribution will work perfectly fine on Facebook ads. Therefore, this video has been divided into five different sections. In the first section, we are going to see how you can configure Google Tag Manager container on your Shopify store and on your final thank you pages. In the second section of the video, we will configure Facebook configuration tag so that you can track page views and Facebook cookies on all the user session. In the third step of the video, we are going to see how you can configure the tracking scripts that will trigger purchase event on the final thank you page. In the fourth section, we will set up the Google Tag Manager container to track those scripts that we have added. And in the last section, we will do some testing to make sure everything is working all right, fine tune if necessary, and publish the changes. There are three prerequisites of this video. You need to have a Google Tag Manager container and a Shopify store, and you also need to have a Facebook business manager account. So in this first section of the video, we are going to set up the Google Tag Manager container on the Shopify store. So let's get to my computer so we can get the tracking scripts for Google Tag Manager head and body snippets. On the overview page, you can click the GTM container ID and this will open a pop-up which usually has the head container code and the body container code. First, we are going to copy the head code so we can paste it in the Shopify store. On your Shopify store, click on online stores and then it will automatically redirect you to the theme section. If you don't have enough permissions on the Shopify stores to view the theme, you need to contact the owner of the store to update your permission. Once you're there, click on the three dot and make sure to duplicate theme before you make any major changes on the website because you don't want the store to go bad. And if anything goes wrong, you can always go back to the previous version. But since this is a demo account, we are not going to create a duplicate for this one. Let's just directly edit the code and proceed from there. We are going to look for a file called theme.liquid. Usually it's on the top of the liquid layout file and we are going to locate the head section and paste the head container code right below the head section. This GTM container code is basically going to trigger all the events on the website. If you don't have this code on the web pages, then those pages will be outside of the tracking scripts. Now we need to paste the body snippets, so let's copy that. Go back from the Google Tag Manager container to the Shopify store and let's search for the body snippet because we don't know where it might be on the page. Perfect, for me it's on line 255. Let's place some space and add the body snippet. Now we have the tracking snippets on the theme page, so let's hit format code and hit save. Let's just make sure if everything is working all right by clicking on the preview button on the Google Tag Manager web container. What this will do is that open a debug view which will be connected to your website and then you can see any event that are firing on the website. So we are on the website right now and I have installed a Chrome extension for Google Legacy Tag Assistant. You can find the link in the description and we can see that it has fired the Google Tag Manager container. So this is looking perfect. Perfect. Since we have added the Google Tag Manager container code and it is firing on the website, this code is not going to fire on the final thank you page. So we need to make sure that we can also track any user who is visiting the final thank you page. To add the code on the final thank you page, we need to go back to the home page and under the settings, we will find an option for checkout. Checkout is where you can edit all the code that you are going to add on your Shopify store's final thank you page. If you will scroll all the way down, you will see an option for order status script pages and right here we are going to paste the code for the Google Tag Manager head container. You don't really need the body snippet for the final thank you page because this is not really necessary. Also, if you have any upsell tracking pages, then this video is not going to cover upsell tracking pages. So let's hit save. Perfect. Now we have added the Google Tag Manager container on all the pages of the Shopify store and also on the final thank you pages. So in this second section of the video, we are going to configure the configuration tag for the Facebook pixel so we can track page views, we can create cookies for the users and all the good things. So let's go back to the Facebook business manager. No matter where you are on the business.facebook.com, you can click on this all tools option. This is usually on the top or the bottom of the left hand sidebar. And we are going to look for an option called event manager. This will redirect you to the event manager, which is very similar to how we have Google analytics. However, Facebook does not provide any kind of analytics. They just provide you with the pixels. On the left side, you will see an option for data sources. If you already have a pixel, that's well and good. Otherwise, if you don't have a pixel, it will show you a button to create a pixel right here but since we have already created a pixel the only thing we need is the facebook pixel id 
we are not going to use the tracking code that is provided directly by Facebook Pixel because we are not working with the custom HTML code here. Facebook has also recently renamed everything from pixels to databases because they are also using the same pixel for app and all the other events. So let's copy this database ID that we have for our Facebook Pixel and go back to the Google Tag Manager web container. Previously, we used to work with the default custom HTML tags, but we don't have to do that anymore. Facebook archive team has worked so hard to build a template template for us and we are going to use that. To use the templates that has been uploaded in the Google Tag Manager library, all you need to do is go to the template section and click on search library if you want to look for a tag template. The tag we are looking for is called Facebook Pixel. So let's search for that. And this one is created by Facebook Archive team. You might see a lot of different tags, but we are going to use the one created by the Facebook Archive team. Once this has been added to our Google Tag Manager web container, we can go to the tag section. And now this will be available as any normal tag that we can use. Since we want this tag to file all the pages of the website, so let's hit all pages. And under the configuration setting, we are going to hit Facebook Pixel tag. So now this Facebook Pixel tag is looking good. And the only thing is need is Facebook Pixel ID. And we have already copied that. But before pasting that, I'm going to create a constant variable for this one. The reason for creating a constant variable for Facebook Pixel tag is so that we don't have to copy and paste the Facebook Pixel ID again and again. We can just store it in a constant variable and refer it back whenever needed. So click on the new variable section and we are going to add a new constant variable the and paste the value there you can name it meta pixel id or you can stick with the older name of facebook pixel id whatever suits you the best the naming convention does not really matter once you hit save now what this will do is that trigger a page view event on all the pages so let's hit facebook pixel configuration tag Everything looks good. Let's hit save and hit preview on our Google Tag Manager container to see if the page view event is firing on all the pages of our store. Let's open the store that has been connected with the Shopify. And since we have added a Chrome extension for Facebook Meta Helper, we can see that the page view event has fired. If we go to any other page such as collection page, we can also see that the same Facebook Pixel event has fired. You will not see this request if you have any kind of ad blockers on your website such as you block or any kind of ad blocker did block any kind of scripts that are firing right now so in the next section we are going to see what kind of scripts we need to add in our shopify store so we can track the purchase event if you will head over to the description section of this video you will find a block where you can find details snippets of the code that you need once you have copied the code you can go back to the online store section and hit over the settings under the settings, you are going to find the option for checkout. Right where we pasted the Google Tag Manager code, we are going to paste the code that you have copied right underneath for the purchase snippet. Perfect. Once you have pasted the code, hit save on your Shopify store. Now let's just go back to the Shopify store to make a test purchase to see if everything is working alright. Since we have already some items in the cart, let's just directly go to the cart and make a checkout to go to the fire thank you page and see how our tracking scripts look like. I'm going to create a test user here. And let's fill in some test details so that we can go to the final thank you page. This is a demo store, so we can actually use something called a bogus card for the final purchase event. You can also enable this, but that is also not covered in this video. Alternatively, you can also use some sort of a coupon code to make a test conversion to make sure everything is working all right. So now we have made payment on the website and we are redirected to the final thank you page after the successful submission. So on this thank you page, all the scripts are going to fire. If you go back to the debug window, you can see that a custom purchase event has been triggered and it has all the details that you need such as transaction ID, value, items array. Uh, it also even have a user data that, can, that you can send back Facebook Pixel. In the fourth section of the video, we are going to create tags and trigger that will capture this information and send this data back to the Facebook Pixel. Let's go back to the Google Tag Magic container so we can create the tags and triggers and variables that we need for this event. Let's open the debug window side by side so we can see both the events and the Google Tag Magic container in the same window. The first thing we need to create is a trigger that will fire on this custom purchase event. So let's copy this name and create a custom trigger which is called custom event. And let's rename this thing as custom event as custom purchase. Perfect. The next thing we need to create are some data layer variables so we can capture information such as e-commerce.transaction ID, value, total spent, text, currency and items array. So let's create these five data layer parameters. 
click on data layer variable and the first thing we need is e-commerce dot transaction ID. We can actually copy and paste the value from here so we don't make any spelling errors. Now let's create a parameter for the value. Awesome. Now let's create one for tax, currency and items. So this one will capture the text. Let's rename it to DLV e-commerce dot text. And we need to create one for the currency. So let's create this one as C U R R E N C Y. Let's do control V and DLV. Perfect. And the last one we need is the items array. The reason we need items array is so that we can map these items array to the parameters that are accessible by Facebook Pixel. Also, you might have noticed that this data layer the structure that we have this is very similar to what we used to have in google analytics 4 however in facebook pixel we require a different structure so the first thing we need to do is map these event parameters into facebook pixel parameters there are two ways to do that and we are going to use the first method that is using a custom template offered by stape.io team to map this event parameters array to the structure that is accepted by facebook pixel so let's go back to the google tag manager container and similarly how we imported the template for facebook pixel tag we are going to temp import the template for a variable so let's search that and the variable we are looking for is called facebook parameter generator by state.io let's add this event let's add this variable template to the google tag manager container and go to the variables now this will be available as any normal variable like we used to have perfect now let's hit new and now we can see this new parameter this only accepts one parameter which is array of object and the array of object is stored inside the items.array in GA4 format. The first thing we are going to extract is contents. The IDs are under item underscore ID. The name is under item underscore name. Price is under price. Quantity is under quantity. If my spellings are good enough. Perfect. We are getting these names from this items array where we have item ID, item name, price and quantity. If your quantity is under some other name like item underscore quantity, then you have to mention item underscore quantity here. However, if you're using the script mentioned in the description of this video, then everything like this should work fine. Let's see the way to Facebook parameter generator. And since we are using e-commerce items array and this is outputting content, so we are going to rename it like this. So let's hit save. And now we have to do the same thing for three more parameters. So instead of creating the parameter again i'm just going to copy and paste this one and select content ids now this one will generate the content ids array which is necessary for facebook pixel event parameters now we need content underscore name so let's do that let's rename this to name and this looks good and the last parameter that we need is num underscore item which will tell facebook pixel that how many items has been purchased so let's do that num items perfect let's hit save now we have all the event parameters that we need for this event so let's go to the tag section to create the tag which will fire this purchase event great we have already created the trigger so let's select that and we are going to use the same facebook pixel archive tag for the Facebook Pixel ID, we already have created the Facebook Pixel ID constant. The name of the event is purchase, so let's select that. And we are going to send some user data. Let's create some fields for that. The first thing we need to send is content underscore type. This will tell Facebook Pixel what kind of store we have. So since this is an e-commerce store, we are going to select products. The second thing we have to send is the num item. Since we have this num items in a Facebook parameter generator variable, we will select that. Then we need content underscore IDs. Let's select content underscore IDs from here. Then we need content underscore name. Let's select content underscore name. We also need some more parameters such as contents. So let's add contents. We need value. And since the e-commerce parameter generator is already generating the value parameter, therefore we are not using the staves template for this one. We also need the currency. So let's add currency. And the last thing we need is order underscore ID. So let's select transaction underscore ID. Let's rename this tag to Facebook pixel purchase. Awesome. Now we have created the tags and trigger and all the variables. The last thing left is to make a test conversion to make sure everything is working. Alright, so in this fifth section, we are going to do that. 
let's hit preview so our debug window is connected with our shopify store let's open them side by side so we can see all the events that are being pushed directly inside the store let's go to any of the product pages so we can buy that and see how the final thank you page looks like let's just click on buy now so we don't have to go through the normal checkout phase let's create one more dummy user by a different email tester.com let's do test Let's continue. You notice that we don't have access to the final checkout pages. Therefore, none of the events are firing on these checkout pages. This is one of the limitations for using Google Tag Manager with a standard Shopify store. Let's add bogus card. And let's hit pay now. Now we will be redirected to the final thank you page. And on the final thank you page, we can finally track the user interaction with that page. So on this final thank you page, we can see that the custom purchase event has been fired and it has also triggered this Facebook pixel event. And if we will click on this uh, helper extension, we can see that the Facebook purchase event has the purchase ID, contents, and all the other details. If we will go back to the event manager on Facebook event manager, this event will show up here in rough 30 minutes to 3 hours perfect everything is working all right so we can finally go ahead and publish all the changes so they are not no longer in the draft board facebook purchase event